Hey, welcome guys. In this video, we're teaching you about Plex and Plex Premium Pass. So we have all these services like Netflix, Amazon Video, Hulu, basically all these cloud streaming services. But what if you have a whole bunch of media content at home that you want to organize in the same manner? Really give it that whole cool digital library look and feel and organization. Well, with Plex and Plex Pass Premium version, which is a paid service, you can actually get a lot of those cool features right in your own home. Now I'm gonna go over the basic features of Plex and also the more advanced features that come with the Plex Premium Pass. So what you guys are seeing right now is the Plex interface. This is the main interface. So of course, the more media content you have, the more organized, the more cooler it'll look, your whole digital library, your own little cloud. Because if you have a NAS, for example, or if you connect your Plex service to say Google Drive as just one example, or Dropbox, you can actually have all your media content streaming from the cloud. So it's always available 24 seven at any time from almost any device you log into. It's pretty cool, right? So we're gonna go through this really quickly, but efficiently, of course. Basically, we're gonna do the simple. We're gonna start from these options and kind of work our way down just to keep things kind of consistent. Recording schedule and program guide is live TV. Now do keep in mind, this is only available on Plex Pass, the paid service. So let's jump straight into it. So recording schedule ties in mostly to program guide and program guide is what you guys are looking at right now. So the, what's basically happening is I have an over the air antenna, which if you haven't heard of it, basically allows you to get free TV signal over the air. Uh, this is nothing new, it's been around for a couple of decades actually. Some channels are in standard definition as you guys are seeing right now. Some are available in high definition and there is a record button at the bottom so you can use your computer as your personal DVR. And what it basically does is scan the channels and give you like a TV guide as to what to expect, what's coming up on next. So Plex Pass does have small payment installments or you can just get a lifetime pass for about $160. Now that dollar does depend on where you're living, if Canada, US, uh, the currency does change of course. So to keep in mind, personally I have the Plex Pass service, it's great, it's phenomenal. Um, just because of that live TV for example, but we'll get into some of the additional features as we progress throughout. So playlist is pretty generic playlist, but how do you add a library of content that's digital content on your computer or your NAS or whatever it may be? Well, it's pretty simple. You hover over a library section, hit the plus sign, and you're gonna choose what content you have. So let's say I might have some movies that I've ripped from my DVD or Blu-ray collection. Hit next. You can then choose the source, add it, and what's gonna happen is Plex will then grab the title of your movies and add the data. So I'm gonna give you an example. Let's jump into the movie section. So I have two movies, Batman vs Superman, which I ripped from my own Blu-ray, and I have Daddy's Home. So I'm going to explain why I'm doing this. So if I click over to Batman vs Superman, you'll get a whole bunch of data. So it's reading the file name that I have a video called Batman vs Superman. It's going to inject the Rotten Tomatoes ratings, IMDB ratings, sometimes it depends on which one it flips between, cast, um, basically trailers, a whole bunch of stuff. It really does make it feel like a digital online library like iTunes or Google Play Movies for example, but it's all your own videos. So if I play this, I'll get caught by YouTube because I'm playing uh, copyrighted material. So if you go back, just for the sake of an example, go to Daddy's Home. This is a movie from 2015. So I actually have a file on my computer, which I named Daddy's Home 2015. Uh, it then automatically synced all this data. This is all the information here as a cast. But if I play the video and I resume it, it's actually my wedding video, okay? So all I did was find a video on my computer that's the same length, rename it to this movie, and Plex thinks it's an actual digital movie. So I haven't done anything illegal for this <laughs> video demonstration, but that's basically kind of how it works. And if I were to stop playing it here, jump on my Android TV and continue playing it, it'll resume on the Android TV. So you have that really synchronization going across any platform you switch over to. One of the main features about Plex that I almost forgot to mention is that it can play almost any video file format I can throw at it. And the developers are always trying to keep up with the newest standard. So it does play MKV files and MP4 files that are compressed in H.264 and of course H.265. Same thing for TV shows. Uh, I got this copy from a friend's DVR. I ripped a copy of Rick and Morty from the latest season. And of course it injects what information it can find for that TV show. So now I'm gonna go over that thing that I mentioned that was extremely annoying about Plex. This is one of the most annoying features by far. So my home videos are the most precious media content that I have to me. I have all these funny videos of my nieces and nephews and of course when I start my own family, the home video section is be that much more precious to me. So here's the thing, you make your own home video section, it can't grab data from the internet. I mean that's a given because it's all my personal content, right? So here's the problem. 
And notice that the default view cuts off a lot of the titles. So I have my description of my folders pretty down to exactly what date it was um, and what the function was about. That's kind of kind of know how I know what each video is about. So this is okay on a, on a computer because you can always change the view to something like say list view. You can see the full description. Problem is on other services like say Android TV. Basically the main way that I watch Plex, you can't do that. It's gonna basically be listed like this and the title is cut off. You have next to no information available. You have no idea what you're basically watching. I just find it kind of bizarre that my most important media content, I can't really list properly the way that I want to. So switching over to music, music, adding it is free. Um, you can get them the free version of Plex, but you can get these cool features with the paid version. So all these songs are a little bit old. This is before I got Spotify, of course. Um, if you go over to Nas, for example, I click one of them and then I click lyrics. Lyrics is a paid feature. It's basically, following the song live and giving you which lyric is basically being uh, told by the artist themselves. You see it just kind of highlights on itself, it's going to automatically keep moving down the list on its own as the song progresses. There's the ability to kind of rate songs, uh, specify the genre of them, and then create like a mood mix. So if I'm feeling like rap and hip hop and I have all the songs classified as that, it'll automatically start playing a mix mash of rap and hip hop songs from my personal library. Now there's some other cool features, a lot of them I can't list because the list is extremely extensive. In fact, if you go over to the Plex website, you see the comparison between free and premium, there's just way too many to go through. I really want to touch base on some of the most coolest ones. So some of them of course is parental control, which you can lock down certain content. If you want to say, for example, play a certain movie that you're afraid that someone else in your house will play back from the beginning, you don't lose your spot, well you can create kind of like guest accounts. So you can have the same media playback, but it'll resume at different spots for each account. You can also share content with friends. So for example, I want to share some of my movies, click share, you throw them in an email, and they'll get an invitation to access your content. And of course, one of the coolest things is of course offline playback by synchronizing it to other devices. So to quickly demonstrate how it works on Android, for example, in a different operating system, I'm currently on LTE. So I'm not connected on the same home Wi-Fi network as my desktop computer. But as you can see, the interface is really similar uh, to the desktop version, which is great. Now here's one of the cool things about having Plex Pass though, is if I select a certain media, so it's like this for example, the fake Daddy's Home movie, and there's a little button down here that looks like a down arrow, I can download the video. So here's the thing, if I'm traveling for example, and I want to get a whole bunch of content from my computer over to my cell phone, you know, so I can throw on some headphones in the plane and just listen to this content and watch it, this is what you could do. But the cool thing is that it'll try to compress it if you don't have a lot of data. So for example, I'm on LTE, maybe I want to compress it only down to 720p and 2 megabytes a second. Or if I want to keep the original version, I can do that. So that's one of the cool things about synchronization. I can just kind of sync a whole bunch of data and have it all available offline. So when I'm in the air and I'm traveling, the airplane, I have to turn on the airplane mode. Well, all the video content that was on my desktop has been synced over to my cell phone. I actually have an external drive connected to my NVIDIA Shield, so my Plex library is on 24-7 and accessible at any time. So definitely worth checking out Plex, at the very least try the free version, you might get enticed to want to use the Plex Pass paid version. If you do, I highly recommend the Plex Pass for life, I mean it's well worth it, you're paying a one-time cost, it lasts forever. It's like I said, it's like having your own personal Spotify, Hulu, Netflix, Amazon video and all that stuff jam-packed into one of your own customizable giant media library. This is your library, you control it the way you want. So if you guys found this video useful, be sure to check out my Facebook, Google+, Twitter, Instagram links in the video description. Hit that like button, it does help, subscribe, and thanks for watching.